better not be soy. I got Jeff a soy coffee and he would not drink it. Like with my soy creamer. Like Jeff, it's not gonna make you die. You also give us fire chips that make our mouths. <laughs> yes, I do. Can we get our snacks now? Or yes, later? please do. Oh, cool. Let's have a coffee. All I know is that this feels so moist. Oh, my husband always spots these when they go to come yeah. here. He's like, we're gonna stay on that page. Hey, can I sit here or will I be in your way? No, you can sit there. Are these both yeah. regular right coffees? Oh. Oh Let's, no, uh, they heard my story about the creamer. Watch what you said. <laughs> and Jeff not. Yeah, Jeff wouldn't, that Jeff wouldn't drink it with soap in it. Do you have regular cream or powder cream? I got the snack creamer. No, Jeff, it's soy milk. No. Sweet original. Yeah. Original. Right here. You like it lighter though, don't you? Um, I don't, yeah, I like a little bit of cream. I got you some of that. All right, I'll eat that in a second. Do you have napkins? We do. You guys going to come and get some really delicious. There's no calories either. Yeah, you have a big Is that chocolate or blueberry? I think, I think there's some blueberry, some chocolate, and then something. I forgot what kind of flavor the other one is. Are those that are, are rating like on a five, we're going to start in two minutes. Is that what they are? Yeah. Don't they look cute? You know, we're doing an eat and appreciation breakfast with Panera later in the month, too, so watch for that. That's going to be fun. And pie a palooza. Yeah, we have a room full of pies. We're doing that this week. That's actually a perfect color. Where's my, I gotta get my notebook. All right, we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, first things first, um, a lot of what I'm going to cover today is actually already pre-written in here, but when they asked if they wanted us to print out a copy, I said absolutely not, because you don't learn when you read, you learn when you write. So it's in the Gazette somewhere. If you didn't get a copy, we'll bring more over to you guys and we'll put them at the front desk. But I'm also not here to read to you, okay? Really... The reason why I wanted to do this, this subject, and I always usually do something like this subject around this time of the season, is because I want to give you the language of essentially when you take what you see in there or what you write down today, how do you actually present it in a way to where you get them to take action now, all right? Because we can sit there and, and give them reasons why now is better until we're blue in the face, but the reality is, is that if we present it in a way that's convincing, they're more likely to take action. So my goal today is to take essentially the objection handlers and give you ways of presenting them to where the consumer would say, you know what, I never thought about that. That makes a lot of sense. All right, so first things first, and this one actually isn't in the book, so we'll start with this one. That is the conversation that I'm having with a lot of clients right now on are you familiar with the economic indicators that are taking place in today's market? This is every single presentation I go on. Or if I'm over, out over the phone trying to close for an appointment, are you aware of the, 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 the economic indicators taking place today in the real estate market? And there's five economic indicators that I'm putting focus on to help them understand why waiting isn't a good idea. And let's be honest for a second. We know as salespeople, what, all right. If I were to, if it weren't the holidays and I said it was, I said it's May. Is now a good time to list? What's your answer? Yeah. Yes. All right. What about in August? Is now a good time to list? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much every. The point is, is that every time we always find a reason. Okay. And by the way, I actually will say this to clients. You know, as a salesperson, if someone were to ask me, I'm almost always like, Yeah, now's a good time to sell. Yeah, now's a good time to buy. But I'll say back into the role play, Mr. And Mrs. Seller. That's because of a slew of reasons, which I'll share with you in a moment. The difference between this year and the past five years is the economic indicators that are taking place, and I'll share those with you now, which, by the way, you know, you know what they are. It's just how you present them. So when I'm on a presentation, I'm saying to the seller, are you aware of the five 
biggest economic indicators that are taking place in today's market. I'll give them to you now. Number one, okay? And this is directly from our MLS, okay? So of course, if you wanted to narrow in on a specific town or a specific city or a specific different part of the state, whatever, you have to pull those stats. But from our MLS, since January, inventory is up 35% since January. Now, if you look at the year-over-year -year reports, it doesn't say 35%, all right? Well, that's because you had a decline and then an increase and you had a decline. But if you actually go back, and I did this, I wanted, I printed off every single, you know, if you go into the MLS, you can print off the markets, monthly market stats. If you go in there and print off every single month, I literally did that, and I went all the way back to January. And every single month since January, the inventory levels have gone up. May not have felt that way, because in the spring, everyone was still saying, no inventory, no inventory, no inventory. We had more homes come on the market in September than we had come on the market in May. Biggest listing month of the year in most cases in our market, May. Okay, sometimes it's April, sometimes it's June, usually it's May. We had more homes come on the market in September than we had come on the market in May. So Mr. or Mrs. or Mr. and Mrs. Seller, when do you think most homes come on the market? This is my dialogue. When do you think, well, oh, spring, always spring, yeah, May, June, whatever, yep. Did you know we had more homes come on the market in September than we had come on the market in May this year? And oh, by the way, do you know when the last time we saw that happen was? 2008, 2009, when we were at the bottom of the market? Think about it. Did it happen in 2011? Nope. 2012? Nope. 13? Nope. 14? Nope. We had more homes come on the market in September than we had come on the market in May. Now, I'm talking about the general MLS, right? If you wanted to narrow in on a city, it may not give you that same readout. But for the real comp MLS service, the one that I use, more homes came on the market in the month of September than in May. So inventory is up 35% since January. That's economic indicator number one. Now, of course, you guys know this. If you wanted to get into dialogue about supply and demand and so forth, you could do that. Uh, that would be an opportunity to do that as well. Economic indicator number two. Interest rates are up 20% in one year. A 20% increase in interest rates. Mr. and Mrs. Seller, do you know when the last time that happened was? No, when was it? 2005, 2006. You remember what happened in 2005, 2006 in our market? For those that were around, inventory levels were going up. Everyone was talking about how hot the market was from 2004 and 2005 and things were on fire. All of a sudden, the last quarter of 2005, inventory levels started going up. So did interest rates. And Mr. and Mrs. Seller, the reason why I'm sharing with you is this is the exact same thing we saw happen at the end of 05 and going into 06. The inventory levels went up, and so did the interest rates. We haven't seen the, this big of a jump in interest rates since those years. Think about it, they've been pretty much dropping uh, up until, you know, we're hovering around the four, four and a quarter level. I know a few months or whatever, a few quarters of the year, they got down to like 375 or 395 or whatever, but for the most part, They've been around 4% the last, if you take an average of the last five years, they've been averaging 4%. So now they're at what? 5%? Okay, that's 20%. That means that buyer, it's their monthly payments increasing significantly. The amount, of for, uh, the amount of home that they can afford is dropping substantially. So again, jumping back into the role play. So Mr. and Mr. Seller, you can see why that is causing a shift in our market. That's economic indicator number two. Economic indicator number three, why we know homes will be worth less, should be worth less in the spring than they are today. Price reductions are up substantially. Price reductions are up substantially. Mr. and Mrs. Seller, did you know that more than one third of the inventory in the MLS has been reduced in the last six months? One third of the inventory has been reduced in the last six months. Sticking with the role play, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, in the entire year of 2017, 
maybe, maybe 10% of the inventory was reduced at the most. We're talking one third today. That's big because guess what happens then? That leads to the prices falling, right? Economic indicator number four, sales are starting to slow. And oh, by the way, this is my script. We haven't seen minus signs on the sales report since 2010, 2009. Now, granted, they're not drastic, right? They're not like sales are down 15% or sales are down 20%. That's pretty drastic. Now, that's, that's like the interest rate drastic. But we are starting to see minus signs. 2%, 3%, I think some counties are 6 or 8%. The sales are down. We're not into double digits yet. Or at least I haven't seen the October report yet. It should be, you know, that comes out usually in the, around the middle of the month. The point is, is that, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, you probably won't feel a drop in sales, a 2 or 3% drop in sales. What I'm trying to share with you, though, is we haven't seen minus signs in every category in every county since 2010, 2011. Economic indicator number five, which we don't have any data showing this yet. There's national data showing this. And this is what happens when one through four takes place. Prices fall. According to the most recent MLS report, that wasn't the case, unless somebody saw something otherwise contrary to that. And the reason why that wasn't the case is because they were reporting August and September sales. Well, August and September sales prices hadn't really dropped yet. But let's, let's look at it like this. You take a listing in September. It doesn't sell. You reduce it in October. It sells in October. It closes when? November, December. So we won't actually start to see a dip in sales prices probably until December or January report. So if you share economic indicators one through four, and you can say, well, let's, let's do a be honest here for a second. If... Price reductions are up through the roof. Why do you think they have to do price reductions to get the home sold? So if they reduce the price to get it sold, and once it sells, we're registering a lower price than where they started, right? Mm -hmm. Well, that price won't get registered until it closes, and then we won't find out about it until a month after that. Right. So the reason why it's not showing up in all the reports yet is because the market was still pretty good in July and August and, and the first part of September. So we take a listing in September, we reduce it in October, it, it even sells in October, it doesn't close till November or December, we're not going to get a report that shows drop in sales prices until December or January. So Mr. and Mrs. Seller, I'm, I'm glad we're having this conversation now because I can get you ahead of this. And so after I share those five economic indicators, I will usually go in, you know, anytime you handle an objection, or, or are trying to get a point across, It's all, and, and you have them shaking their heads and saying, yeah, I guess that makes sense. You always do some sort of close, whether it be a trial close or, or a full close for a signature. So my, my close, if you will, after I share those five things would be, so if you don't mind me asking, do you see any value in waiting? So if you don't mind me asking, taking a look at these five economic indicators, do you see any value at all in waiting until next year now? Because, oh, by the way, what I just shared with you, when I, if I'm meeting with you in February or March, you better believe, based on those, the first four things that are taking place, I'm going to be reporting to you prices are down 2% or 1.5% or 3%. And by the way, you always have to leave yourself an out, okay? You don't want to end up you know, being, this, you know, your feet to the fire or being sued for your statement. So how I usually leave myself an out is by saying something effective. Now, unless there's something drastic that changes in the market, every single economic indicator out there is telling us that homes will be worth less in the spring than they are today. And what are the economic indicators? Those five things. So I, it's really four because we don't know the fifth yet, but we know it's coming. Right? Can we all agree that we know for sure we're going to start to see a decline in sales prices? Yeah, I think so. And why is that? Because of one through four. It's just impossible for them to not show up after you have to reduce a bunch of listings to get listings to sell. 
So I share that with them, and it, especially if I have an analytical, I share one more thing, and I, I do a visual. Do we have a marker around here, Mary Beth? Yeah, do you see one up there? No, I got a highlighter. I don't. No? <laughs> so if you could grab me one, and then I'll, I'll come back to that thought. So what I'd like to do, especially because it builds a lot of credibility, is give them a, essentially a visual of where we've been, and, and especially for those that have been in the business less than 10 years or those that haven't been through a shift, you're less likely to get the question of how long have you been in the business when you're showing them what has went on in 2005 and 2010, right? Because you're showing them, of course, what, you know, knowledge of the market. So the perception is, oh, you must have been around for that <laughs> if you know this. So while she's grabbing that, let's shift gears a little bit and get into more of the seasonal specific ob objections. And again, like I started off, I do the same talk pretty much every year around this time. And, and I, I, my goal is to not to stand up here and read to you the objection handlers. My goal is to give you good ways to present them. Because I can sit here and read them from the piece of paper or you can grab them out of the book. They're, they're all in here. But I would encourage you to write them down because you don't learn by reading. You learn by, by writing. You, ma you master scripts by writing out. All right. So if I have a seller that says to me, you know what, I'm thinking of waiting until spring or after the first of the year because of the holidays, after I share the five economic indicators, if I have to, right, if they're still like, well, we don't really want to deal with a bunch of people coming through our house during the holidays or trampling snow through our house, mm -hmm. here's the good news about the, having your home for sale in the fall and winter months, all right? I think you guys know where I'm going with this. The only people that are shopping for real estate in the fall and winter months, or obviously you know later in fall, depending on your season, you're going to say fall or winter months, are serious buyers. You don't have tire kickers. See, what happens in the spring, April, May, June, all the tire kickers, you know, they've been kind of like hibernating on, hey, let's, yeah, maybe this is the year we ought to do that. Let's go see what's out there. So, you know, if a, if a, if a, a listing of ours gets 15 showings, I would say almost a, a third of those could be just, yeah, maybe, if we find the right house, if it makes sense. Guess what happens when you have your home on the market right now? Every single one of the showings you get is from a buyer, thank you, that has to buy. And probably an eraser, so I can use this area here. <laughs> <laughs> told you that, I guess. As long as you're going to. Well, a napkin can work. Repeat. Yeah, all right. A napkin can work. So when they say to me, well, I don't want to deal with all of the showings, oh, that's the best part. I mean, literally, that's how I, that's the best part about this time of year. You don't have to deal with a ton of showings because the only people that are out searching for real estate are serious buyers, buyers that have to buy. So why would you want to miss out on a, all that serious buyer traffic? And by the way, I always kind of put the disclaimer out there like, hey, you're right, we will have less showings because especially if you're working a client that's been on the market during the spring and summer, you better clarify because when they list with you, especially in expired, when they list with you, they're expecting more traffic. Well, you better let them know why they're not going to get more traffic, but each showing will be more valuable. All right, so that, that I would definitely make sure to point out. Okay, now this, this one is a very general one and it'll still work for this time of year, being seeing what's taking place in the market. Of course, you have less competition in the fall and winter. However, I would present it this way because we just got done telling them that inventory was going up, right? So what I would say to them is you have less competition today than we'll have tomorrow. You have less competition today than we'll have a month from now because every single month since January, the inventory level has gone up. So unless that trend changes, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, there will be more homes that we're competing with a month or two from now, which means there will be more homes that we're competing with in January, February, or in the spring. So even though I know the whole, the, the, the script is, well, there's less competition, you know, the reality is, is there's more competition today than we had in the spring, and it's the fall. That doesn't happen. That goes back to the five economic indicators. 
So if that trend continues, you'll have more competition by waiting. Let me ask you a question. Do you think you can get more or less for your home when you have more competition? Less, because it becomes a price war and a beauty contest. The more homes that we're competing with, the stronger we have to get on price, the more attractive our price needs to be, and the better your home has to show, which means putting money into it or staging or something to that effect. Okay, next I wrote down. And this is certainly a valid point. Um, it depends on the market and the type of buyer and the price range, but it's real because I've seen it. And, and I've, for those of you who've been doing this for a while, you know you have clients that do this. People get more vacation days around the holidays, right? Thanksgiving, mm -hmm. a couple weeks off before Christmas. Now, of course, you could argue, well, they're busy with other stuff. Yes, but not if they have to buy. Not if they're in a situation where they, they are outgrowing their home or ready to move on or got an, another opportunity or got a, got a raise. Okay, people actually have vacation days to use. And by the way, if they have to buy, they're gonna use them this time of year. This one I love and normally gets a chuckle out of people. And of course you have to be very careful in how you present it. And you know, obviously after you have a certain level of rapport, you'll see where I'm going with this. It's easier to prepare your home for sale in the winter months. No lawn cutting, no fresh mulch, no pulling weeds. Let's be honest, your curb appeal doesn't matter as much in the winter. Because what do they? What what will they say? Well, I want to get you know. I want to. It looks so pretty in the back. They're looking to. They're all the homes they're looking at are snow covered. Mm -hmm. So going without flowers and greenery and all this stuff doesn't matter. Because all the homes they're looking at are snow covered. And and let's be honest. If your landscaping isn't that great, it's a it's a benefit. Mm -hmm. You know, I was on an appointment just last week. And, and we walked outside, and so I was like, what do you want me to do out here? I'm like, well, it wouldn't be bad, you know, to maybe have the leaves picked up. I'm like, but he's like, do I need to get fresh mulch or this? I'm like, no, that's one of the best parts about putting your home on the market right now. It, people aren't expecting, you know, grandiose curb appeal. And it's especially evident once we get into the winter months. It doesn't matter at all. I mean, we've got a salt and, and, and uh, you know, a shovel. But. Next, I wrote down, and this is a very common one, and, you know, it, it's depending on the market, and it's obviously very true for here. Um, relocation buyers. It is a fact that of all 12 months, this is my dialogue to the seller, especially if I'm on an appointment where it's 350 and higher, because most people that are relocating are at that price point. Mr. and or Mrs. Seller, whatever, it is a fact that the month of January, of all 12 months, is the number one month of the year for employers to start employees new jobs. So more corporate transferees start new jobs in the month of January. It's proven. You can Google it. Why is that? Because at the end of the year, they're, they're doing all their shifting. They're doing all their business plan. They're laying people off. They're giving people promotions. They're doing raises. And when do they start? January 5th, 6th, 10th. Now, don't get me wrong, there's definitely relocation mid-year as well, but the majority of it happens in January, and it's been that way for the last 20 years. So guess what happens? If they're starting their new job on January 5th, this is my dialogue to the seller, I'm sitting at the table or I'm on the phone. Let me ask you, if they're starting their job on January 5th, when are they shopping for homes? November. November, November December. December. And by the way, guess what happens? You know, they start the job January 5th, you know, they're, they're shopping for homes November, December. Maybe they find something, maybe they don't, but they haven't closed yet. So a lot of times, and if you've been doing this for a while, you've experienced this, where, you know, the husband or the wife moves up first and they start working until they close on the next house and then the family comes up. But even if they don't end up closing until January or February, when are they shopping? Yeah. November, December. This next one I call the timing analysis because every you have to assume, and it's important that you do this when you're using this dialogue, you have to assume that they think if they put their home on the market today that they'll be moving in the middle of the holidays. 
right? So when you're talking to a consumer, you just have to assume that's what they're thinking. And also assume that that's, that's probably not what they want to do, right? They think they're going to be moving in the holidays, okay? So I call this one the timing analysis, which I'll just draw it out real quick. You guys have seen me do this a million times before, so if you haven't, jot it down. Here's the timing analysis, all right? Somebody starts, start, puts their home on the market. Let's just say, hey, you know, I'm meeting with the seller, and I do this on my appointments. Even, I do this even if this is an objection. I do this just so they understand the timing of how things are going to work. All right, so today is what, the 6th, 7th? 8th. 8th. Today's the 8th, all right? So, is November 6th. There we go, okay. So we're meeting today on the 8th. By the time your home gets live and on the market and professional photos, whatever, let's say now it's the 15th. All right, so we go live on the 15th. All right, well, we are pretty aggressive at getting homes sold, but as you see, the market's softening, and it might take 30 or 45 days to sell your house today. All right, so let's just be optimistic and say it takes us 30 days. Okay, we're getting your contract, uh, we're getting your house under contract by December the 15th. Closings right now, of course, I understand some can take 30 days, some can take 50 days. Just I always say 45 to be safe, even still. Okay, so where does that put us? That puts us at 2-1. And I can usually negotiate 30, sometimes 60 days of occupancy for you in the home after closing. So where does that put us? 3-1 or even 4-1. So essentially, today, you sign paperwork with me today, we get on the market here, we get it under contract here, we're not closing until here, you're not moving until there. March or April. And we're in November. The perception of most consumers is that if we're listing today, then we're moving somewhere in like December or January. No, think about it. Okay? It's pretty black and white. Even if, even if we had a buyer that could close in 30 days, fine. We're closing on 115 and 15, 30 days, 45 days after that, we're still late Feb, early March. So I'm using, I use the timing analysis on, any point, on every appointment anyways, but more so this time of year to make sure they understand that they're not actually going to be moving in the dead of winter, or especially around the holidays if that's their concern. And oh, by the way, here's the best part. If I know they're gonna be buying locally, I'll explain this, okay? You get to sell now when there's not a ton of competition, because let's be honest, even though the inventory is increasing, not as many people list their homes in December. So you get to sell now when we don't have a ton of competition, and guess when you get to shop for homes? When people start putting their homes on the market. You get the best of both worlds. That's my script. You get to sell now, even though inventory is going up, you get to sell now when we don't have a ton of competition, and you get to buy and shop for a house when homes start coming on the market, right? Because you can shop when your home is pending type of thing. So you actually get the best of both worlds. And quite frankly, in the market we're going into, if everything I said becomes comes to fruition, which it's looking like it's going to, you actually get a better financial situation too. Well, how's that? Well, because I just got done telling them that homes could be worth less in the spring. So they got to go under contract at a higher price as a listing than they would here. And oh, by the way, they're not buying here. They're securing a home here, which means financially it's actually a benefit to them as well. Now, of course, I would probably throw a disclaimer out there and add it because most savvy consumers would pick up on this and say, everything's relative, right? You sell low, you're gonna buy low, you pay. If you get more for your house, you're probably gonna buy, pay more for the next house. But the reality is in this situation, if everything continues to happen the way it has, if, keyword, you're gonna be better off. You get to sell for more than you would sell here and you get to buy at a lower price than you'd pay here. It's a win-win, isn't it? And that's how I would present it. Sorry, that. can you repeat that last thing again? The, the, yep. The last sentence. You, you said win-win yep. right after that. What did you say that again? One it's a win-win, isn't it? No, no, right before that. You said you get to yes. buy here. You get to, you get to sell, okay, okay, based on everything I've explained, economic indicators and everything that's happening in theory, if we can assume Mr. or Mrs. Seller, which they would generally assume, okay, as I, I share the five economic indicators, if it's safe to assume that homes will be worth less in the spring than they are today, then you get the best of both worlds. Because instead of waiting until spring to sell, you get to sell at a higher price 
than what you would get here. And instead of buying here, you're buying over here when the inventory is still going up, and you get to buy at a better price. Got it. Thank you. Make sense? Okay, good. Thank you for that. <clears throat> Next I wrote down, and this is very true. Of course, it's not usually the main reason or the only reason, but it's worth noting that many people do take this into consideration, and that is tax purposes. If they get something secured or closed by the end of the year, they get to write off that mortgage interest and anything else that would normally be written off. Of course, I always say I'm not a tax attorney. Check with your CPA. I always put the disclaimer out there. You get to write off your costs on next year's taxes. Your April, you know, taxes are due April 15th, right? You get to write that off this coming April. If you close or have those expenses in February, March, whatever, well then you don't get to write those off until the following tax season. So there's some people, well why is that a benefit to me? Because based on this scenario, I'm not buying until here. No, no, no. It's a benefit to you because you have some people that are trying to get real estate purchased and closed before the end of the year. That's why it's a benefit to you as a seller. Yes, as a buyer, if you close here, right, you don't get to benefit from that as a buyer, right? Because you'll, you'll get to write whatever those costs are off the next year. Te check with your tax accountant on that. But for someone buying your listing, that is kind of a big deal. I use this one, especially when they say they're having a lot of out-of-town guests over. Or they definitely don't want people walking through their house you know, around Christmas or, or Hanukkah or whatever, it is, whatever holiday it is they celebrate. And that is, well, I tell you what, I do this for, for clients all the time. Because I don't want you to miss out on that highly motivated buyer that's obviously shopping for a home in the middle of December for a reason. No cost to you. I'll get the sign. You got family coming in? No problem. I'll get the sign order down and I'll restrict showings for, you know, when are they coming in? They're coming in the 15th, 18th, whatever. We'll restrict showings from the 18th to the 28th. So your house is off limits. Your family and friends, because by the way, that's a concern. So I bring it up. Because they don't want their family or friends knowing that they're selling. A lot of times that's what it is. They're not going to tell you that, but I'm telling you when they say that, a lot of times that's the reason. So, and, and I know that because I've, I learned that because they've told me, well, we don't want people knowing that we're selling and we have family coming over. We'll call the sign down and we'll restrict showing so you won't be bothered with any showings at all during that time. And I'll get the sign called down. Now, of course, is there usually an expense of that? Of course. But if it means getting a listing or not, then I'm going to do it, right? I'll just have two sign charges instead of one on that property. I have a question on the other side yep. of that one. So if I'm a buyer's <coughs> agent and I see that it's restricted, it, is it worth my time to call and say, hey, is there any chance we could get into it Always. if I have a motivated Always. buyer? Always, yep. Always. Because what I will say once I get their confirmation on that, um, I will say now, you tell me, if we have someone, we'll put it in the notes, but if they call us because they have a highly motivated buyer, yeah. do you still want to know about it? And usually their response is yes. yes. Okay. And the reality is, is maybe they told us the 18th, but the family's not actually coming into the 22nd, so they have a few day of window there where they won't be bothered, okay. as an example. And then we talked about the occupancy, negotiating occupancy. If someone's really worried about this, Heck, I can get you 30, maybe even 60 days uh, of time in your home after closing. Questions on those before I show you one last kind of diagram on the market? Where'd that napkin go? Questions on any of those that I just gave you? Or the economic indicators? Yes. That would really be more of a question for their accountant or their or their CPA. Okay. Yeah, I, I and by the way, I usually try to avoid even if I know the answer. Yeah. Because I don't want to be held liable for right. any kind of tax questions like that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Because you don't know how much money they make, you know, you don't know yeah. It's better to be, be safe than, than sorry on those. Yeah. So I mean I guess it might be off topic, but Inventory is on the climb, which I don't 
deny, but we're still yep. at lower inventory levels than say like 2015 when we did have hot springs and yep. things like that. I mean, so just from an overall economic perspective, what do you think it looks like? I mean, I, well, the interest rates obviously play a huge factor. So here's, here's what we pay attention to, all right? And I appreciate you bringing that up because it is not one of the economic factors, <laughs> indicators that I mentioned, but I bet it will be next spring. Months supply of inventory. Meaning, we might have the, we may have the same amount of inventory as we had, of, like you said, 2016 or 2015 or whatever, but if less homes are selling, I mean, we're, we had some counties that were in, in you know, close to double digit drops in sales. If less homes are selling and the inventory levels remain the same, then that actually increases the month supply of inventory. Mm -hmm. So what I, would, what I would say we'll be talking about in 2019, after we have some more data of sales prices dropping and so forth, we'll be talking a lot about month supply of inventory. And I know that because <laughs> in 2008, 9, 10, 11, I mean, that was like part of our everyday language. Oh, our month supply of inventory is at 6.7 months right now. That means if another home, if not another home came on the market, we have more than six months of supply for the current buying public. So that's something that I'll be paying close attention to. And, and our MLS, I don't think, and, and I'm very basic when it comes to some of the reports, so there might be a report on it. Uh, I don't think our MLS has a specific. There's a way, there's a calculation, there's a way to do it. But I can tell you, I was just looking at the Grand Rapids report, and their, ML, their month supply of inventory is already starting to increase. So it was like 1.4, I'm just using round numbers, it was like 1.4 month supply in the middle of summer, and right now it's 1.8. Right. So that means more homes are coming on the market, less homes are selling, more homes are sitting. More homes sitting is what leads to a higher month supply of inventory. And you guys have probably heard, the general rule of thumb is one to two months supply and you're still in a seller's market, Yeah. right? Two and a half to four months of supply is, is considered balanced. Four or more months of inventory is a buyer's market. The good news is you don't usually go from sellers right to buyers, mm -hmm. right? So we might have a year, in 2019, if I'm making a prediction, we have a pretty balanced market where we'll start to see a little bit of decline in prices, maybe a little bit of decline in sales and an increase of inventory, but it won't be drastic, right? right? Because we're gonna, we're gonna play around in some balanced area for a while. We're already playing around in it right now, right? Sellers are more open to accepting offers that have contingencies. I mean, we're seeing closing costs come back. I mean, all the things that we saw in the buyer's market are starting to creep up. And right. so I think we'll have a you know, year, 18 months of that before. And, and it may never, it may not get worse. You know, 2019 might be kind of the average for a couple of years. It might not get any worse than that, and that would be okay. Sure. You know, that's a good thing. So when we start seeing number five as far as the, the dip in sales prices, yeah. What do you, like when you're studying the numbers, are you comparing year over year, month to month? Because like this time of yep. year, we're see a dip in sales price, Mo right? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look at month to month. Okay. Yep, so basically I would rather, because year over year, because it was, so, it was a year ago, right? So the, the fa economic factors at the time were so different compared to now. Right. We're, we're, let's be honest, last month wasn't much different than, the, you know what I'm saying? So. Yeah. I'm more so going there because there's a couple things I wanted to write, and actually you, you made me think of something, you know, and for those that, who, who was around in the last shift, eight, nine, 10, okay, so maybe a dozen of you. This was a very common one that I would draw, not on this board because, you know, we were in a different office, but basically <laughs> I would do this little chart for sellers. Now, I don't think it's gonna be this drastic, but I would basically say, okay, we were here, in let's just call this June of, of 18, all right? And now we're down a little bit, and let's just say this is, uh, you know, let's say the report shows that, wow, we actually had a drop in, in sales prices in December of 18. All right, well, we may have a month or two of flat, and then it could go down again, so let's just say uh, this gets us to May of 18. So my, my job, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, is to get your home sold in that range there before this drops again. I'm just using, yeah, this would be 19, yeah, sorry. And I'm just using, picking on May, I'm not saying. I, I don't know if we're gonna see a drop up, right? So I would use a little down moving staircase to explain, and this is how, you know, you start at this price, and then you reduce your price, and then you keep it on the market for a couple weeks, and then you reduce it again, and then you keep it on the market. This is what 
takes place, right? Mm -hmm. My job is to get you sold somewhere in here so we don't have to have all these drops and we're always constantly chasing the market down. So it's gonna be really important for us to show sellers how long a house was on the market, how many times the price yep. reduced and what it ends up selling for that, in their neighborhood. Yep, and, and you'll probably wanna use this script. Days on market is the enemy to a home's value. Yep. Days on market is the enemy to a home's value. Well, well, why is that, Jeff? Here's the best script I can give you for that. Okay. Well, let me ask you guys a question. You bought this home. Days on market is the enemy. Days on market is the enemy to a home's value. Well, why is that? Well, let me ask you a question. When your home goes under contract and we take you out, we show you homes. What do you think one of the main questions you'll ask me about a property that I show you is going to be. How long has it been on the market? Why do you ask me that? The perception is that if it's been on the market a longer amount of time, we can get a better deal, which means will cause you to tell me, let's go ahead and write a lower offer, right? So don't you think most buyers are gonna do the exact same thing with your house? Of course. So I'm always, Number one question the buyer asks when they want to write an offer on a house, how long has it been on the market? Why? Perception is the longer it's been on the market, the less it's going to be worth, which means we're going to start with a lower offer. So yes, it's very important that we price it right from the start for that reason. The last thing I want to draw, and then if we have any questions we can cover them, is, I, I, and this will not be to scale, and I'm not an artist, so don't don't yell at me, and I'm working around some TVs here because we had some bad, we had a design flaw when we thought this would be a really cool idea. <laughs> Put TVs in the middle of our Oh, window. no doubt. You know what though, honestly, that when I come to, when we think about it, yeah. how often do we use all three? Would yeah. you keep these two and just get rid of this one? I mean, yeah. here's the thing. The and only then you have this whole space right here. Yeah, the only yeah, negative is we got to get it painted again because you see that oh, it's yeah. absorbed. But well, I come in on Sunday, I like having all three TVs here. So you watch football? <laughs> 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 or we could just go to Jeff's house. He's got like 12. There you yeah. go. All right. So I like to show That's this. That's on the 13th. I'm going to finish December. with this. And if you obviously we have some Q&A, we can do that. So I, I always <laughs> like to show this when I go on appointments, especially because, number one, it's a visual. And people are very visual. Some people are. Uh, and, and if I'm presenting to an analytical, they're really going to appreciate this. And this is not the scale, so you'll have to go back and fix it later. All right, so basically I say, okay, here we go. I, I say, I've been paying attention to what's going on in the market since the year 2000. Okay, so I put the year 2000 right here. Okay, we're talking year here, and we're talking uh, home value. Value. Sorry, it, yeah, it's, it needs to be repainted. 2000. Okay, let's go to 2005, let's go to 2010, let's go to 2015, and here we are basically 2019. Okay, from the year 2000 to 2005, we saw an awesome increase in home value. From 2005 to 2010, we lost everything we had. And by the way, 2010, 2011 was basically the bottom of the market. It's amazing when you look at this, how it works, right? 2010 to 2015, we rebounded and we're almost back, and I kind of do like a line like that, we were almost back to where we were. Some communities you could argue that we got back to 2005 prices, which was the peak. But for the most part, most communities were just under the peak. All right, so for the sake of that, you could bring it up here if you wanted to, but whatever. All right, so from 2010 to 2015, we had, we had a great ride. And by the way, if you look back, yes, we still saw some increase in 2016 and 2017, but not like we saw in 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, right? I, I can remember being on appointments in, in 2017 and, and some seller saying, well, we bought it last year. Hasn't the market gone up a ton? From 16 to 17, it didn't really go up a ton. The increase we saw was 13 to 16, 12 to 15, right? So from basically 2010 to 2015. And then, now we're kind of riding here, and we're about right there. So we had a little flat line for a couple years, 
and now we're, we're starting to see a little bit of a decline. And so where this will go, I don't know, okay? It could go one of three ways. It's either gonna go this way, which I don't think it will, because we had this big of a drop because of the auto industry and the mortgage crisis, okay? Um, auto industry is doing fine and mortgages have cleaned up their act for the most part, so I don't think we'll have that big. So I'm telling the client, I don't think it's gonna go like that. It could go one of three ways, that way, this way, or back this way. And I'll say, Mr. Mr. Seller, I think this one, based on everything I'm seeing, is most likely. We are going to see a slight decline in prices, and if they hold a gun to my head and want me to give them an amount, I'll say maybe two to 4% a year for the next couple years. But let's think about it. 3% a year times three years, 9% decline in value on a $200,000 house is a lot of money, right? It's $18,000 out of their pocket. And of course, I always throw the disclaimer out there, I don't have a crystal ball, there could be a drastic change in the market, but every single economic indicator out there is telling us that this is going to happen. And you know what those economic indicators are based on what we've covered today. You had a question? Yeah, well, you said two to four percent is gonna be the decline. I'm totally ballparking it based on just experience and what I predict. For the month, year? For the year. Yeah, so in other words, if, if, if a home is worth 200000 on January of two, 2019, I think by December of 2019, it could be worth 3% less. Okay. Yeah. Two to 4% decline a year for the next couple, three years. Total prediction, but I mean, I'm not just pulling a number out of the sky. I'm going based off of what I hear Gary Keller say. I'm going based off previous experience. I'm going based off what I'm hearing lenders. You know, you, you understand that most mortgage companies are predicting that interest rates will hit 6% within the next 12 to 18 months. They lost some rates at six last week. There you go, I mean, Life, yeah. Life start a few Very possible. Talking about it. Yeah, yeah, so that, that could be, 6% could be the norm, which isn't that bad because guess when things were 6%? Right here, 2005. We were doing pretty good there. So, who knows? So questions on this, anything that we've covered on creating urgency right now. Now, of course, you could say, well, you, and you guys know me, I'm like 80% sellers and 20% buyers. So if you're looking for a dialogue to use with a buyer right now, that's simple, okay? Because a buyer may tell you, well, sounds like we should wait till spring then. There's gonna be more inventory and better prices. I would not do that, and here's why. If the prices drop two or three points, between now and spring. $200,000 house, 2% 2 of that is what? 4,000 bucks, all right? They drop 4,000 bucks, but interest rates go from 5% to 6%. Pretty sure over a 30 year loan, that's gonna cost you a lot more than 4,000 bucks. A lot more than 4,000 bucks. You could actually plug that into a mortgage calculator. And I, I would start using those again, by the way, if you need it to create urgency. I would start using a mortgage calculator and show them if they go to five and a half, what your payment will be. If you want to create urgency with a buyer right now, whip out the old mortgage calculator, the MLS has one, plug in their price range, what you know they're putting down, and, and show them how much more they'll pay by waiting. So, I mean, th this, is a, this is a real thing. You can certainly wait till spring and you'll have more homes to choose from, I bet, and you might even get a little bit of a better deal on the house. But if you're paying a 6% interest rate when today you can pay five, holy crap, you're paying a lot more than the two or 3% you'll save on the house. People always look at the, the, the price instead of the long run. Yep, exactly. So whip out the mortgage calculator and show them. They can probably, you figure out the difference. I, I, think, I think the number I heard was around 100 set for every 1% increase in um, mortgage interest. It's every 12% well, percent in buying power. Yeah. 12% in buying power. And on a $200,000 house, by the way, is like $200 a month payment yeah. difference. Yeah. Well, 200 times 12 months is $2,400 a year times a couple of years. Now we're at 5,000 in two years. There's your 2% there's your that you were trying to save by waiting. Right. Yeah. Questions on anything we covered today? Cool. Well, I hope I armed you with some, some awesome dialogue and, and some things that you can use and, and put into action.
action. Um, if you haven't gotten the copy of your Gazette and you want everything I just shared, oh, this is sealed. It's literally like the first page in here. You open it up, it's, it's literally like right there. Every, pretty much everything I just shared. But minus the dialogue and, you know, I don't have the economic indicators and all that stuff in here. Um, and then hopefully you've marked your calendars for the 15th because I'm doing a half day at absolutely no charge um, for you guys and, and, and whoever you want to bring at uh, uh, Schoolcraft Tal yeah. College Vista Tech. Mm -hmm. So, and that'll be, that conversation is how to thrive in a shift, which I haven't done that one. I'm, I've done it recently, but I haven't done it for our group yet. So it's a new, it's a new session, if you will. So bring a guest if you'd like from another company or yeah. <laughs> Actually, the there's two events that day. <laughs> oh, the, the technology? No. What? It's a joke. There's two events that day. Oh, yes. Hey, come learn how to make more money by not selling more real estate. That's right. a great message. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so you get to sign on. Oh, yeah, we get all those jokes. Yeah. We do too. Oh, you're funny. Mm -hmm. All right, awesome, guys. Thanks for coming. That was great. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. Yeah. Yay, that gazette is gorgeous, by the way. Where do you get a gazette from? Yeah, I don't know.